Hey everybody, how you doing? So first of all, I want to introduce Kyle to everyone. Kyle is a legacy owned player from Philadelphia, grew up playing in middle states, a national tennis player. He had a great junior career. Uh, he won a gold ball. He, uh, I think, never lost a high school tennis match, as far as I can remember, was a blue chip recruiter. And then something many people don't know, in 2013, he beat Serena, Roger, and Rafa all at the U.S. Open, which I think. Uh, thanks, to, thanks to Legacy <laughs> well, for sending me up there. He, he took him out in the target hitting contest. We'll come back to that. But I don't know how many people can say that they beat any of them, especially all three of them at the same day. That's, uh, that's an incredible, uh, incredible honor. After that, he was uh, recruited and decided to go to Ohio State, as you guys can see, Buckeye Nation. Um, there's so many accomplishments, like first team, all Big Ten. You're a member of last year's indoor championship team. Um, I can go along your single accolades. You're always ranked top 30, top 35 in the country. But I think also you were a, you know, a great academic scholar. You got Big Ten, Scholar of Word, ITA, Scholastic Athlete, all four years, the last four years. I don't know if I missed anything, but I think mm -hmm. you're a perfect example of a great uh, student athlete. Is there anything you want to add? No, I mean, I think you said most of it. Um, you know, I, I just... When I when I came to college, I, I just wanted to, you know, obviously work really hard in tennis and work hard, really hard in school, and and those were like my two my two main focuses, um, and I knew that they were super important to uh, to me and to in in order to to you know succeed later in life. Nice. So yeah. tell me tell me a little bit about your uh, time at Legacy. What are some of your memories uh, that you have of Legacy? No, oh, I just uh, I just remember um, Legacy was was the the place where where I grew up playing tennis. I, I started going there when I was around twelve, and um, I went all the way through high school. and And uh, it was kind of like a a home to me. and And I was there every day before and after school sometimes. And and um, I uh, I just uh, I re I remember. Um, you know, going to summer camp, helping out with other programs, going to the benefits. Um, you know, Legacy was a special place for me. Um, and there was, there was just such a good community of people there. There was um, lots of, lots of great coaches, lots of great players. Um, and everyone was really nice. Like everyone was, you know, sometimes people can be a little bit, um, what's the word? Uh, whether it's stuck up or whatever, but, uh, you know, legacy was just a, a special place with, with a lot of good people. And I'm really appreciative of, of what they've, they've been able to do for me. I th think it's a, it's a two way street. I remember having you and you were always a, a great leader and everyone. I, always... I... What's that? Sorry. Did what? You say Sorry. You cut out. No, I said you were always. No, I was just going to say. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, sorry I'll, I'll talk I'll, I was just gonna say that uh no I, I remember basically pretty much when you started at Legacy and <laughs> and um one thing I'll one thing I'll say about Sanjin is, is he has more um energy and happiness than most people I know so um you know just uh you know really uh you know you, you don't you don't get too many coaches that genuinely love what they do every single day and I can tell you that Sanjin's one of those guys that does um so you're really lucky to have Sanjin as as a coach and, and heading up legacy right now so that's uh, that, that's very nice well I can't handle any more so much, much, much respect <laughs> to you. Thank you, that's very nice of you that's very nice of you I really appreciate that um so some of the questions that we had um uh, coming to me were kind of like you have obviously, obviously doing a lot with college, but when it comes to juniors, you know, and there's a certain level of pressure playing the L3s, L4s, playing the national tournaments, how much do they mean to you now? Like, you know, do you ever think about those matches or your experience going back, what would, what would you do differently or what are you proud that you did? As far as, like, juniors goes? Yeah, junior career, like playing tournaments and, and um 
yeah, I mean, every I think every tournament matters. Every match matters. Um, I knew the importance of of working hard and and um, constantly trying to get better. I, I obviously had an end goal of of going to college and and playing tennis at the highest level that I could play at. Um, so I knew that, you know, in order to do that, I had to get better every year. I had to win junior tournaments. I had to do well in, in national tournaments. I had to travel and, and play all over the place. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, juniors, there was a lot of special times. I remember traveling a lot, uh, with my parents or, or with my, my coach, John and, um, um, I, uh, I just, um, you know, all I, I all I'd say is every single tournament matters, and and you should want to win every single match, no matter what the level is. Got it. And how do you think? How do you think your thought process about competition and preparation is similar now, or is it different? How do you view competition in big matches now than you did before? How can college these- is a little yeah. Sorry, say that again. No, and just keep in mind. So I'm talking to the to those guys who they're kind of looking, they're getting nervous for matches, and they get anxious to play and compete. So, how what advice do you kind of have for them based on your experiences? Um. Yeah, I mean, mat, match play can can be pretty difficult. I'd say uh, college. Um, you know, it's the nice thing about college is you're you're playing for something other than yourself. Um, you're not necessarily playing just to you know win a junior tournament or or win a match at a junior tournament. But I'd say in juniors, um, whatever you can do to keep you calm. I, I don't know. It's different for every single person. But um, for me personally, I uh, you know I wanted to win every single match when I was a junior tennis player. I wanted to um, do well. And yeah, that can put pressure on you, but at the same time, you got to try to step back and find the zone where it's almost like it matters, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, at the end of the day, you want to just keep getting better and better, um, every match you play. Um, and, uh, I think for me trying to remember, um, for me in in the juniors it was always about you know like working on the right thing working on the right thing like whether i win this match i i try not to get myself too psyched up for those kinds of matches um i know my end goal was to always get a college scholarship play some professional tennis whatever whatever your end goal is i would just focus on that and less about the result of the match that you're actually playing in at that moment and just have fun, enjoy yourself, do the right things, get yourself prepared. Um, I mean, I do the same thing in college today. I, I try to be really relaxed before the match and, and not really think too much about it. And then um, when I go out for the match, I have, you know, on a college team, you have teammates playing next to each other. So it's a little different. You can kind of feed off of their energy, which is really exciting. Um, yeah. But uh, I think whatever whatever that thing is for you that helps you calm down, just try to find that and try to think about the end result. Try not to think about what is, um, you know, in the moment right now. So let, let me follow up with that. If you have any tips for these young guys, because a couple questions are, do you get mad on court? Very rarely do you see Kyle mad. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Uh, and then if you do, how do you stay calm? Um, you know, what do you do to your routine or rituals? So getting getting mad on the court. Um, well, I think uh, John, 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 my coach, could – could, uh, we we mentioned John last office, time, but, but jo John Glover, national coach, currently old director of player development legacy for six years and did a great job with Kyle. So go ahead, go ahead. Well, there was a time during my junior career when he was working with me where I had some serious anger problems and he basically kicked me off the court and told me I had to sit on the, I, I was playing in the legacy clinic and he put me down all the way on the bottom court for about a month and, and that <laughs> kind of taught me the lesson. Um, 
to to kind of not not get so mad but we started doing this uh thing during the matches where he'd kind of video my matches and we'd make count of how many times I said something positive or said something negative or looked positive or negative and we wanted there to obviously be more positive than more negative yeah. uh and at the beginning I, I'd say a majority of the matches were more negative than positive uh so we tried to make a goal of of um you know saying a positive thing after you miss a shot or or um you know just telling yourself like come on Kyle like next point like you can do that like like what what did I do wrong um I can fix that problem uh kind of thing um but that kind of taught me to um kind of just move on from stuff that happens during matches I still can get like oh Kyle are you kidding me how'd you miss that shot or or yeah. stuff like that but um for the most part that that kind of that kind of taught me a serious lesson um and really really helped me out hmm. question is uh next that's a really good point thank you for sharing that uh did you get homeschooled to play more tennis no I always wanted to be <laughs> uh in normal school and um i always i always wanted to have some friends in high school and i always thought if i was a homeschool kid i would never see anyone so i i was like nope i'm gonna go to normal school and my school worked really well with me i missed 50 60 days of school every year during high school um mm -hmm. sometimes the entire my last three years i missed the entire month of january every single year but um you know they, they worked really well with me and it was nice you know i like played some high school tennis helped them out played i, I was also able to play baseball in high school as well oh yeah i forgot about that you were a pretty good baseball so, player yeah and i really enjoyed playing baseball so i i played baseball all the way through high school um i actually played more baseball than tennis in high school <laughs> uh as far as high school sports go but um i uh yeah, no, I never wanted to be homeschooled. I think this is a really good point because a lot of people today feel like in order for them to go pro or play at a high level college team, that they need to not only be homeschooled, but they can't play any other sports. So I think you're a no, great I mean, example of, of not doing either and still being very successful. A lot of people, um, they, uh, yeah, a lot of people get homeschooled, but a lot of people don't. You'd be surprised how many people still go to normal school. Uh, most of my teammates at Ohio State pretty much went to normal school and, and um, still did everything. So it's possible. It's completely normal. You don't have to feel pressured to be homeschooled if you want to stay at school. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to do homeschool, I'm, I, I think it's fine. I just that wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. So that's that's good. Um, I'm going to segue to that famous target hitting contest at the US Open okay. 2013. Um, so I know you, I guess you can talk about it, but you did an entry round and then after that you got to compete and go head to head with Roger, Rafa, Serena. I don't know if there's anyone else on the court, but, and then you took them all out, you hit more targets. So how nervous were you to be in Arthur Ashe Stadium with the goats and Tell me about that. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was tough. I was 15. Um, and you know, they let us go out like the day before and like see the court or whatever. And obviously it's huge, but you don't realize like how big it is until you're like on the court. Cause I had been in the stadium before, but it doesn't look as big from the stands as it does on the court. Yeah. Um, and you know, we didn't get a warm up at all when I went out with the, kids so there was four kids from four different places and we um the winner got to do it against roger rafa and, and serena um and um, none of us got a warm-up we just went out there cold and they fed us 30 seconds of forehands and 30 seconds of backhands and you hit as many targets in the air as you can and i did awful against the kids we all actually did really bad because we all were like what is going on like i i couldn't look above the fence because i just didn't want to see anybody uh, <laughs> but um i tied with another kid uh we only hit like seven targets and then we had like a 30 second playoff round and i i hit four and he hit three wow. so, that's, that's not the best way so to qualify and, but 
No, no, it was pretty bad, actually. It was low level. It was pretty low, but I was super nervous. Uh, and uh, I just, I remember he hit three and I got to go second. And like halfway through, I hadn't hit like any. And then like the last 10 seconds, I hit like three in a row and, and got four. But uh, then I went out against the pro and I was like, well, whatever. Like, I'm already here. This doesn't matter. Like, it's, I just beat the kids. Like, this is super fun. And then I ended up hitting 15 targets against the pros. Wow. So you go um, from three to 15 or four to 15. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I ended up hitting 15 against them. And uh, I um, – obviously, I raised 15 – I got $15,000, and we put that back into Legacy, which yeah. was super nice. Um, so that's something – yeah, I don't know if you guys caught that because he he beat – he won the contest. He gave got a $15,000 donation to Legacy, which was great on, on both ends. So, I guess from all of us, thank yeah, you still for that. That helped, uh, you know, kids get some lessons. So I thought yeah. that was really awesome. Um, yeah. Way to kind of give back. Yeah, for sure. But you gotta, you gotta win over Roger, Rafa, and Serena. So I think that's, yeah, you know, that's you, better you know, than anything. You, you gotta get there to get the money. <laughs> I like it. So let's let's shift a little bit forward. We're gonna talk about the recruiting process. And I know that's that's a lot of things that people don't know about. So tell me a little bit about your decision to go to Ohio State. Were there any other schools? Um, and, you know, we'll fast forward to now you going into college. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so when I was being recruited, I, I actually uh, looked at about six schools. Um, Georgia Tech, Texas A&M, Texas, TCU, Ohio State, Michigan. Um, and when I went on my visits, uh, yeah, I mean, I liked all of them, but there was always kind of like a little problem with some of the visits I went on. I went to Texas and, and uh, you know, I, I didn't really like the team that much. Then I went to Texas A&M. The coaches didn't really know if they wanted me. And then I went to TCU, one of the coaches. Um, I had heard some bad things about the assistant coach they had just hired. Um, and then kind of like – when it came down to it, my, my final two schools, Ohio State and Michigan, which are like two of the biggest rivals in college tennis, were like my final two options that I was trying to like figure out between where I wanted to go. Um, and you know, it was a really, it was a really hard decision. I just, I remember the John, my, my coach from juniors, his, his old coach was the coach at Michigan and, um, Ty Tucker, my coach at Ohio State right now, um, is a bit of an intense dude. Um, he was a little bit scary on my visit. You know, he, he lets you know, like, we don't joke around here. Like, we're going to be working 11 and a half months a year. Like, you, you're going to be here in the summers. You're not really going to get a break. It's going to be intense. But at the same time, it was like Ohio State was top five every year for the last 10 years when I was being recruited. They were the best school uh, tennis wise. Um, and it was, it was just about whether I wanted to go there and, and struggle to find my way into the lineup and, and go to like a really great school and compete for a national title or go to a Michigan and, and, uh, play right away and play high in their lineup. They were still very good. Um, but those were kind of the two options I was trying to decide between. And it was, it was really hard um, for a while. I wanted to say like, I actually was leaning towards Michigan. They were giving me some more money. Um, you know, there was a couple of different things. My visit there maybe went a little bit better. Um, had some friends on the Michigan team, but um, I just, I just remember thinking to myself, you know, like I really um, want to compete for a school that's going to win Big Ten titles, compete for national titles, and um, you know that's kind of where I came to Ohio State. And ever since I've been here, we've won the Big Ten title every 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 year. We've made it to the finals at NCAA's once. We made it to the Final Four tw uh, once, and we've made it to the quarters twice. So we've been at the end of NCAA's every single year with a chance. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and and now with all the stuff happening with 
the coronavirus, I'm I'm back again for another year. So, so why um, why don't we why don't you tell a little bit of people about that? Because one of the things that you can explain for some of the kids, they don't know what it means to redshirt. So you redshirted, which gives you five years of practicing at least. And now so, because of Corona, you get a sixth year, which is incredible. Yeah. So so my first year I went to Ohio State. Like I said, like it was either I was going to play high at Michigan or or play kind of struggle to get in the lineup at Ohio State so I decided I was going to redshirt take a year I might have played a little bit but probably not um, that first year and then uh, my second year I got a lot better Um, basically with with redshirting what you uh, were talking about you you practice with the team but you don't get to play any of the matches you don't get to play any of the college stuff but you get to practice with all the guys you They'll get better. You can play outside tournaments. Like I was still 17, so I went and played some junior tournaments back in Middle States. Um, and then I, after my first year, I actually went back and played Kalamazoo again. Um, so uh, I um, I did that, and then my next year, I, I was I was in the lineup. My, my first year of eligibility, and I've played the last four years. Awesome. And I know you, you were the captain this year and you're going to be the captain next year as well. So that's, yeah. That's, so, I mean, that, that, that says a lot. Can you tell me really quickly, just going back to, cause I know how ties strict and discipline going back to your junior career. And I know you were really good at warming up. So can you tell me a little bit about your warm up routines then? And what do your warm up routines look like now in, in college? Yeah. So, you know, stretching, and dynamics are super important. Um, you know, I, I'd i say you need to do at least um, 15, 20 minutes of, like, dynamic warm-up before you start playing. You need to warm up properly. You need to take care of your body. You need to stretch after you play every single time. Um, and uh, now at school, I think what, what we kind of um, – do is is we'll do like a dynamic warm-up we'll run around um but uh for matches specifically we 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 my coach is really weird he has like a specific like schedule of how things go so like we get there like about three and a half hours before the match starts we do our first warm-up we hit for about 20 minutes or so then we go get food we come back we might like stretch a little bit in like our locker room area and then we go out and we do um, 42 minutes before the match starts every single time. So if we play at like 1 p.m., we start every single warm up at 12, 18, which is different, but it, it it's just how we do it. And we do a little run where we like yell a bunch of stuff and then and then we get into our warm up and, and we have about a 40 minute warm up. It's super intense sweating getting ready for the match because our coach wants us to be literally like dripping before the match starts and then we go right into doubles and play and then singles it's it's a long process wow that sounds uh intense sounds really yeah really intense yeah it's a long process for sure so what what advice do you have for like the young like younger kids i would say i know it's a little bit different talking to like 10 11 year olds but we have some 15 16 year olds that are, you know, sophomores, juniors, seniors getting ready for college. Uh, what what do they need to prepare for mentally and physically? What What's the difference? As far as, like, what college Junior, is like? Yeah, juniors to college to maintaining school and, and playing on the team. What's the – Yeah, I mean – I would I would say you know it's it's just a step up in every single thing. So you know you're going to be playing more tennis. Maybe you're going to be, you know, doing um, a bunch of fitness, weightlifting, whatever. It's basically going to take up almost your entire day because what you're going to have is the way college works is you have about chunks of, let's say, um, an hour to two hours of classes. Um, a day or sometimes even longer um and so my schedule typically is is let's say we have morning practice we have practice 8 to 12 and then or like 8 to 11 and then we do like a lift for till 12 and then I have class from like 12 to 3 or 4 and then you 
you get dinner around five and then, and then all of a sudden you have to start doing your homework and, and you've really not done anything until about five or 6 PM. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's really about managing your time wisely and making sure that you're taking care of yourself. And, um, it's, it's just, it's just a step up in every single category of your life, you know, just learning to take care of yourself, learning to take care of your time, um, learning to kind of become your own person. Um, I'd say is, is really what the difference is between college and, and high school nice. or wherever they are. Nice. Um, we have about less than five minutes, we have about five minutes left with Kyle. Um, so if you guys have any tennis specific questions, you can please type them. Um, everybody, you know, just ask one or two questions. I'm going to try to get to everyone. So anything regarding junior career, college career, what he's doing currently now. I know some of the people are asking what you're doing during the COVID-19, COVID-19 outbreak, um, you know. So any questions? Well, I guess, Kyle, you, you're lucky because you're in San Diego. You're a little bit above San Diego. So tell them a little bit why you still get to play tennis. <laughs> so um, it's really nice for me. I've kind of had the benefit of um, uh, being able to still still hit and, and still kind of train a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm out at my girlfriend's house with her family, and she – her dad is a is a tennis pro and they have a club about half a mile down the street and he's the head head pro there and um he uh basically their club's like the only open club in the area because it's actually a uh condo or a, a timeshare resort um and they don't want to close the timeshare so they're keeping the club open but the nice thing about the club is there's not really um any uh anyone there so we just were able to go and play on the courts and and we can take some of kind of like the equipment they have and bring it home and do some workouts at home um i can you know run around the neighborhood i can do a lot of home workouts um so it's actually hasn't been too bad for me um and i've been able to still kind of stay in shape and, and train a little bit and and um it's it's been good nice well we have a, a from a follow, fellow buckeye jason katzer wants to know what qualities or attributes do you think made you successful in the juniors and now in college um i think well, especially at ohio state with with my coach um one thing that he really preaches is is being tough and having a lot of grit and um, I'm I'm a pretty short guy, um, you know. I, I'm five I'm five nine, but I've got short hands. I've got short leg or short arms, short legs. I have to really um, work for everything that I get. And um, I think it's taken a lot of toughness. It's taken a lot of um, you know determination. It's taken a lot of kind of just like growing up. And um, I think one thing that's, that's made me really successful is just being really mature and taking care of myself and, and working as hard as I can and, and not, um, you know, not, not just like throwing in the towel, not, not taking days off, uh, making sure that, um, you know, I'm stacking kind of like good days upon good days upon good days, um, to try to, you know, get to a, a new level each day. Um, which I think, has uh, has helped me a lot, um, but yeah, it's a, it's. A, I think it's just about hard work and 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 being and being tough and, and making sure that you're taking care of yourself. And then my, I have one final question for you: is um, what advice do you have for all the legacy players uh, now on their final journeys? You know, using everything what you just said. That do you have any advice for them? Um, I would, I would just say, uh, you know, work as hard as you can every single day, take advantage of what you're given. Um, and, uh, I think, I think just be, be willing to, um, 
just um, have fun, love, love doing what you do and love doing what you do. And um, I think it's mostly about working hard and, and having fun and, and enjoying everything. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't. It's uh, like, if you're well, not having fun. Please, please, please stop. <laughs> Well, we got well, one more bonus real quick question. Brian Wynn, hopefully you remember Brian Wynn. He wanted to know, how do you sustain your higher level when other practice players weren't necessarily your level? That's a great question. You got a minute. <laughs> that is a good question. It's, it's tough. Um, I think uh, I think just, um, you know, you have to have some kind of inner drive within you. And, and when, when people aren't as good as you, you, it's pretty easy to kind of slack off and, and um, kind of stoop to a level, but you kind of have to be willing to say, no, like, I'm still going to work hard, you, you know, maybe do some more things on my own. Um, but when you're not getting kind of that level of match play or, or point play or drilling that you, you would hope for, um, you know, I, I think, you know, it, it's just all the little things, doing things on your own, um, just making sure that that you're taking care of all of that stuff and that's all you can really do. Awesome. Well, Kyle, thank you. All of us, a legacy are so proud of you and we, we wish you the best off season and a great sixth year next year, getting your masters and getting to play. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and hopefully we'll speak with you soon and see you at legacy soon when all this is over. Thanks for having me, Sanjin. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for everyone that joined. Uh -huh. It was super fun. Thanks, Kyle. See you all. Thank See you ya. for joining. Bye.